today we're going to be doing a little bit of a different video and we're going to be taking a look at and unboxing the Poly, Poly Mega uh, retro video game system. So if you guys uh, aren't familiar, I used to run a, another YouTube channel uh, that was based around pretty much all retro games. Uh, I was one of the bigger retro game collectors in the country, uh, if not the world, back through uh, up until about 2018 when a tornado took my house, uh, destroyed a lot of what I had, and I just chose not to rebuild as much. Uh, and back then, Polymega, uh, Playmage, was the company behind the Polymega, created Kickstarter, and uh, they had this great idea that, hey, we're going to build a retro game, kind of an emulation system, that can take your original cartridges, your CDs, basically every, uh, in theory, every possible game type, along with the original controllers and accessories, and make a system for it. Uh, I was a huge advocate for it. Uh, I was on the verge of backing their Kickstarter when the storm happened. Uh, took the house, things kind of got derailed. Uh, once I moved uh, and got a new place, uh, the Kickstarter was over. However, they started taking pre-orders for their units. And I went ahead and pre-ordered one, and this was, oh gosh, this was probably like 2021, um, right kind of, you know, when crypto was booming. And I decided, you know what, I'm just going to drop all the money, and I'm going to <laughs> pre-order the full bundle and every module that they've kind of released since and it's taken about three years to get my pre-order I was kind of you know chalking up possibly a lost cause they went through uh, I don't know if it was management changes but they did go through some restructuring there especially on the support side and ultimately they uh, over the past month or two They've actually shipped out and fulfilled pretty much all of the pre-orders prior to last year, I believe. And so, here we are. It has arrived. Um, the One of the modules, the N64 module, I actually got uh, a couple months ago. Uh, or maybe, yeah, probably about two months ago. However, I not, didn't have the base station, so I couldn't actually do anything with it. Well, today, the base station along with the NES module, the Super NES module, the Sega Genesis module, and the Turbo Graphics module all showed up. So at this point, I have received everything from Polymega that I pre-ordered, with the exception of the light gun. And I believe they haven't finalized production yet on the light gun. Uh, so we won't be able to try that part out yet, but uh, today I kinda wanna just talk through what the Polymega is and why this was such a big deal. So starting with the base station, we're going to go ahead and get these unboxed and take a look at them. But essentially with the base station, it has the CD module uh, in it, which allows us to, and you can see it also includes one wireless controller, uh, but essentially this allows us to play uh, Sega CD, uh, 32X CD, Sega Saturn, uh, PS1, Neo Geo CD, and TurboGrafx CD. So we're able to play all of those, and nice, really nice thing about this is you can install the games onto an NVMe in the unit. And the same goes with all of these other modules. Uh, you can put the real cartridge in and rate the game to the NVMe, and then you can basically have everything on one unit. And the way the modules work is it's an expansion bay system. So if we go ahead and get this unboxed. Right off the bat, what we'll see, and this is my first time opening it, um, but here you can see we've got a CD tray. Uh, this is where we can pop them in. And we've got a expansion bay cover. Uh, there is a button on the side if we press that it'll actually eject that empty kind of uh, placeholder cover. And this is where the expansion bays will slot in. 
So if we wanted to play Sega Genesis games as an example, we take the Genesis module, slot it in, and we'll unbox that here in a minute. And what you're going to see on that is we can play or we can use original Sega Genesis controllers, which is really unique. So we've got, uh, right off the bat, we can see we've got two USB ports. And again, this is the base station. We do have our power button, our eject. Here you can see the copper heatsink on the inside. Uh, this does run a Coffee Lake uh, S-Series processor from Intel, which is rather unique. They didn't go with the FPGA in the base unit, but what they did is they went with a x86 processor, which is really unique for this segment. Uh, normally you don't see that, and that is going to allow us to run a lot more uh, games in the future, hopefully. Uh, we've got power adapter, we've got HDMI, we've got Ethernet, and we have a micro SD card slot. And then we have a uh, exhaust fan in the back here. Uh, but there is actually a blower fan on the Coffee Lake CPU that blows out the side there as well. And if we flip it over, there is on the bottom a SSD slot here. This is an M.2 for an NVMe or an SSD. And our plan with this is to actually run a four terabyte in here so that we can load it up with all of the game library and we'll never have to really worry about putting in a physical cartridge uh, unless we want to. And then taking a look here, this is the controller. And if I grab a, um, just for comparison, I actually have a PS3 controller sitting next to me. So uh, if we go ahead and pop out the controller, You can see we've got our um, button in the middle, and then we've got select turbo, start clear, and it does have a PS3 or PlayStation style pattern to it. We've got shoulders and triggers, and we do have a reset um, little pin switch on the back. And comparing it to like a PS3 style controller, you can see how similar that is. So from a dimension standpoint, it's pretty much identical probably to like a PS4 controller. And continuing on, we do have a, a USB adapter that is used to sync up the controller. And let's go ahead and get out the power supply and any type of documentation that they may have provided. So we do have an HDMI cable. Uh, we also have a USB, uh, micro USB cable. And that would be for the controller. It does have micro USB on the top. Uh, most likely just for charging. And we do have our power brick. Uh, so this is a rather hefty uh, power brick, but that is to be expected. Uh, it is 12 volt, uh, 75 watt power supply. And we also have a quick start guide here. Now that we've taken a look at the base station, let's go ahead and quickly take a look at some of the expansion modules. So the first one we're gonna open up is the NES one. And this will work with Famicom cartridges as well as, so that's gonna be European, Japanese, and also your US NES cartridges. You can see the edge connector there. We've got two original style NES ports, uh, controller ports here. And what that means is that you can use an original controller, uh, original NES controller if you prefer in here, or you can use their controller, which is in the style of an original NES controller. In addition, this controller will also work on an original NES. And you can buy the controller separate. Uh, so if you wanted to procure yourself a second controller, you can certainly do that as well, uh, direct on their website. And the way, again, that the expansion works is you just pop, push this button to slide out that one. And there's uh, two little grooves here, uh, matching grooves on the bottom. 
and you just slide that in and just like that you can now plug in your controller port on the front here put your cartridge in and you can play that game and you can also install it to the NVMe once you add sufficient storage there. Let's go ahead and pop this one back out and let's take a quick look at all of the other expansion modules. This is the Super Nintendo one and just like the NES one, this one also includes a SNES style controller. Uh, again, original style controller port that you can use uh, or you can again use an OEM controller on that and there you can see your Super Nintendo Edge Connector and then the next one is the Sega Genesis one and this one you're going to notice is a six button controller which I actually prefer the six button controllers over the three button controllers but if you wanted to use a three button controller you could certainly do that by just plugging it in to the slot here and there we can see we've got our Sega Genesis style edge connector and as I mentioned earlier I did order all of these you don't have to order every single module so as an example we're going to be opening up the turbo graphics module now if you're not interested in turbo graphics then you don't have to buy this module I opted to uh, buy the deluxe bundle and then all the modules since then because I am trying to consolidate my retro game systems down to really just this unit um, on my uh, TV if I can. So that was kind of the whole goal behind this was consolidate everything down. And on this one you can see you've got the slot in the front here and the top is solid because this Turbo Graphics uses those cards. So you just slot the card in the front and the controller, once again, uh, mirrors the original style as well as the original connector. And last but not least, and probably the one I am most excited about actually, um, going into this, I was super excited for the uh, Sega Genesis one so I can play 32x games and also 32x CD super excited about a lot of the CD based stuff especially with PS1 things like that and then they went ahead and they announced an N64 module and that's what we have here um, and if you're familiar with the retro game emulation scene we don't really get N64 emulation systems much at all because it is difficult to quote unquote emulate and so them being able to provide us that capability to play N64 games is amazing and so pop out we can see we've got our four controller slots we've got our N64 slot and uh, we've got a controller that's kind of in the style of the Hori N64 controllers which is really cool because that's what a lot of people like to play now. They don't like the um, the original uh, handles on the um, N64 controllers. I prefer I prefer the original ones uh, with kind of the tri handle, uh, but that's mainly because that's kind of what I grew up on. And uh, Super Mario 64 is definitely one of my favorite games. Uh, N64 has an amazing library of games that I love playing. A lot of people don't like the kind of the polygon looks to them these days, but it's still one of my all-time favorite consoles to play on. And I'm super excited to be able to dump my N64 library onto this unit and fire up those games anytime I want. So we will definitely be making heavy use of the N64 module, uh, no doubt. But that's it for this video. Just kind of want to do a quick unboxing, kind of a small overview of the Polymega. I'm still kind of in shock that I actually did receive it. I really was chalking it up kind of to a lost cause. I did not think that I would be getting it uh, just because of you know, kind of how uh, 
everything has kind of happened over the past few years with the poly mega just in general a lot of people not getting their pre-orders anything like that i really didn't think it was going to come to fruition but i am certainly excited that it has and i will most likely be spending <laughs> the next year or two just uh, periodically dumping games to it uh, but super excited so my next plan is to go ahead and uh, get a 4 terabyte NVMe or just standard M.2 SSD. Put that in there and uh, we'll, we'll get the system all hooked up, we'll get firmware updated, all of that. But I'm really looking forward to trying out everything that this system has to offer. Uh, and it's my understanding that it has some additional capabilities beyond just what I showed here. Um, they are working on some things with uh, potentially some marketplace games, some online play, things like that. Um, and they're actually also making a kind of a base station that you can use on the computer if you want, where you can kind of dock uh, each of these expansion modules direct into a computer. And that will allow you kind of to do PC gaming uh, with these as well if you want, if you don't want kind of that tabletop um, living room experience.